Hi, I'm Beth Rosenberg, Associate Editor of Soundings Trade Only. We're here today with Jim Coburn and Bruce Van Wagner to discuss wholesale financing for dealers. Welcome, Jim and Bruce, and thanks for joining us. Well, thank you, Beth. Uh, let's talk about inventory levels. What are we looking at, and where do they stand now, and is it a healthy situation? Well, why don't I start with that? Um, yeah, considering where we came from, you know, 2008 and early 2009, where inventory levels were huge in comparison to what was being sold at retail, today's market's in phenomenal condition. You know, the manufacturers and dealers took great responsibility to drive those numbers down, and frankly, levels are as healthy as I've ever seen them in the industry. How about aging of product? Uh, are there a lot of older models out in the marketplace at this point? Uh, not at all. In fact, it, when the downturn took place, that was a big concern, and it did escalate up, throw some numbers out. Um, aging over a year old got as much as 60% of the inventory in the marketplace was over a year. Now that's down to historical numbers, which is are below 20%. So we consider it extremely healthy on aging, and frankly, there's, there will be some shortages on boats available um, due to that that the fact that uh, there hasn't been as much produced or sold over the last uh, five years. Yeah, the, the, the pre-owned, uh, there is a shortage going on right now uh, that Bruce alluded to. So uh, that, it's, a, it's a big issue, but uh, the a fall and the winter months, uh, we need to be a little bit careful because there's a, an increase in defaults that's being uh, recorded right now um, for all types of consumer loans, including marine. So we may have a few extra ones on, uh, on repo, but not like it was uh, over the last few years. Jim, in our session, you when you were talking about the marine floor plan lending landscape, you said, quote, the lawn still needs some watering. I wonder if you could explain what you meant by that. Well, in, in, in from an economic standpoint, you know, the numbers aren't, you know, quite where we need them all to be. I, I covered a lot of numbers in the seminar. And uh, for from a, uh, so we got a little ways to go there. But the marine floor plan landscape uh, needs a little bit more attention where the, I said the lawn needs some watering. And, and that means that the dealers uh, um, to, uh, to obtain a, a new floor plan source or a bank, they, they've got to do a lot of work and they've got to develop those relationships and, and, and spend some real real quality time as to how to do that how to present their business plans um, how to educate be educated uh, and to know about the bankers business and their own business so there's a, there's a lot of work to be done because uh, there's so fewer floor plan lenders out there now than there were pre-2007 so um, while there is availability and we, we did talk about that the, we have to work a little harder and we got to water our lawns a little more uh, for this to be successful do you anticipate more lenders will return to wholesale financing for marine dealers when the economy is stronger, or do you think they've left the market for good? Oh, I, I think that lenders will get into marine finance, but that growth is going to be more organic or organically. Um, you, it, it's going to be uh, the, the local uh, the local community type banks, the boutique banks, uh, the regionals that'll that'll get back into it, um, and then grow from there. And that's how floor plan originally started uh, years ago from organic growth. Uh, a national lender just didn't you know jump onto the scene and said you know here we are. But don't be surprised from the the uh, banks that exited, uh, the, the big national lenders that exited and they tell us for good, uh, you probably won't see them coming back into it anytime soon. What about the marine environment would make it attractive for potential lenders? Well, in the time that I've been in this business, which is about 35 years, I've seen a lot of lenders in the business. Well, they jumped into the business because they saw opportunity, an opportunity to expand their loans and make a good return on their investments. They certainly didn't leave because they were making too much money. There were a lot of major losses that take place. So it was one of those things that they had to make a tough decision as to where they were going to invest. And so they backed off of, you know, marine lending. Do I think we're going to have additional competition? Absolutely. When they see that there's a good, secure way to lend into the business and move forward. So I'm anticipating competition will come back, which is a good thing, which we're, we're fine with. Um, but fortunately, the, the need quite isn't as high as what it was in the past because the magnitude of the industry is much smaller today. So until the industry bounces back, the opportunity is probably not as great as some banks might want before they invest. 
Let's talk about the SBA floor plan lending program. Why didn't it work as well as people thought it might? Well, I, I think one of the reasons is, is it's been a, a bit cumbersome for the lenders. Uh, uh, SBA really did a nice job through the urging of many marine uh, associations to uh, enhance the product, uh, you know, to raise the, 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 the credit line limits and to uh, um, uh, uh, move the sunset out further uh, for it in the, in the timeline. So uh, there was a lot of work done on it, but the lenders just aren't, you know, jumping on it because of the, the bureaucratic ways of the SBA and, and uh, some of the fees are a little higher and it's uh, not really cost effective for dealerships to go directly there when they can uh, develop great relationships uh, uh, directly with the bank themselves now. I think it's also a matter of, as I mentioned, the size of the market had dramatically dropped. People got the impression that there's this big need for floor plan lending, but in actuality, most people were liquidating the inventory that they had, not looking to borrow, but instead looking to sell. And so therefore, they got what they needed from the current source. So the only ones that really maybe looking for an SBA were those that wanted the market to be what it used to be. And that's just not reality. The market's substantially smaller, so therefore there wasn't the need for floor plan lending, except for maybe some of those that you couldn't justify providing a loan to. Well, then there's a stigma of uh, SBA that uh, uh, you didn't need to be as credit worthy to get into it. And the dealers that were really fighting and scrapping during the recession or the U.S. crisis period um, really were looking toward and hoping for SBA to uh, be a savior for them, which, uh, which it was not. But but as Bruce said, the, the numbers were smaller. Mm -hmm. And finally, what are the top things a dealer can do to make him or herself more attractive to a lender? Well, the, they, they need to have a, they need to be sharp and have a business plan and uh, know how to develop a relationship with a lender. That, that, it, it's so important. Um, they need to know their industry, they need to know their market, and they need to know the lenders that they're uh, research on the financial institutions that they're talking with. Uh, th those are pretty important things, I believe. I would agree totally with what Jim is saying. I'd also have to say that some of the seminars uh, that were here were beneficial to individual dealers to learn more about you know, the marketplace. The one talked about the crisis that we just went through and the lessons they learned. A lot of it was focused on communication. You know, how do you communicate? And that communication is critical with your lender. And the industry is doing a much better job of sharing best practices. And so I highly encourage every dealer to attend opportunities like IBEX or the Marine Trade Show in Orlando coming up or just boat shows or 20 groups. Learn those lessons and apply them to your business because there are a lot of outstanding dealerships out there that know exactly what's necessary to run a business and they are great guides to be able to do business. Relationships and take advantage of what's in the marketplace.